Welcome to BBSC Videos. Today's video is for coaches and parents of our T-ball players. We'll share ideas on drills and skills to work on with our five and six year olds. Let's start with a warm up. While our T-ballers don't need the same amount or intensity of a warm up as our older players, it's a good idea to get them used to starting an athletic practice with warming up and stretching. These exercises and the simplicity of standing in a line and following instructions is a good transition to a practice environment. Additionally, this part of a practice gives you an opportunity to introduce and work on agility and balance. The first baseball skill we'll discuss is throwing. Even with the softer baseballs we use at this age, playing catch with two players involved is a significant challenge. The primary cause is fear of getting hit with the ball. It may be helpful to separate throwing and catching into two separate skills and drills. First, we'll talk about throwing. As with most athletic movements, we want the player's feet shoulder width apart and weight on both of their feet. We'd like the players to reach back and touch a fence or a tree, having their fingers on top of the ball as they reach back. We're trying to avoid the hand under the ball where the player's throwing motion looks like a catapult. A visual reminder for players is that their body should form the shape of a star when they are reaching back, getting set to throw. One other note on reaching back. We can have the players put their back to a fence or a wall to ensure that they aren't reaching beyond straight back. The overreaching, shown here, puts strain on the shoulder. Next, we show our player rotating toward the release of the ball. His hips have turned with his shoulders. The ball is away from his head, close to on top of his elbow. Players can think about throwing while wearing a cowboy hat to visualize keeping the ball from hitting the wide brim of the cowboy hat as they rotate to throw. Finally, the player has released the ball and follows through, keeping their eyes on the target. Here's a drill you can do without a ball to emphasize the checkpoints in the throwing skill. Put the player against a fence or a wall with a coach in front of the player. The player reaches back to touch the wall with their fingers, palm facing the ground. The coach puts his hand up as a target to slap. The player rotates their hips and shoulders and gives the coach a high five. It's a good idea to add in a follow through after the high five to emphasize that finish with the eyes on the target. Let's shift to hitting. The most important topic in hitting a baseball is safety. Players should only have a bat in their hands if the player is involved in a coach or parent supervised drill. It's best to avoid players having bats in their hands near the bench area. With the potential for younger family members around, the bench can create a very dangerous situation. Players should wear their helmet when they swing, both for protection from other players swinging and from an overswing or follow through of their own bat making contact with their head. Let's start with a few checkpoints in the hitting stance. We'll work from the ground up. Feet should be shoulder width or slightly wider. Comfort and balance are the keys. The toes should be the same distance to the side of home plate and square. 10 toes pointing to the plate is a good checkpoint. Try and avoid feet being turned out or looking like duck feet. The player's weight should be evenly distributed on both feet. Next, we'll talk about the grip. We grip the bat in our fingers, not in the palms of our hands. Our hands are together, touching, and the player's door knocking knuckles are in a line. Another way to think of this is that the player's palms end up facing each other while they grip the bat. A common issue is for players to wrap their hands around the bat to the point where their palms end up facing their chest and their elbows end up sticking out away from their body. This certainly may qualify as a detail that is too precise for the t-ball age player, but if we can help players get comfortable with the correct grip now, it will give them a boost in the coming years. The hands in the proper position, again door knocking knuckles in a line, is connected to the arms being in a relaxed position near the player's side. A player can find an ideal position for their arms by holding both elbows up, forearms parallel with the ground, and then relaxing their arms, 
allowing the elbows to fall into a natural position. This relaxed position creates an upside down letter V, sometimes referred to in hitting circles as a power V. The last checkpoint is the batter's eyes. Eyes should be focused on the ball sitting on the tee and should remain there through contact, extension, and finish of the swing. When a coach or parent will be throwing to a player, the coach or parent should be on a knee or sitting on a bucket to reduce the downward angle of the ball traveling toward the hitter. The hitter should try and track the ball starting from the release point of the coach. Next, we'll talk about equipment. We'll start with bat size. If the bat used is too big, a player will have to resort to dropping the barrel and throwing their hands toward the opposite batter's box, known as casting. Both of these actions lengthen the path to the ball and make hitting even more challenging. Try to find a smaller bat or move the player's hands up on the bat, known as choking up. This can be a big help in the player's ability to control the bat and have success at the plate. One final equipment topic is the tee. The smallest setting on a standard tee can be too high for some of our younger players. The ball will ideally be at mid-thigh and no higher than the player's waist. Alternatives include removing the top tube of a standard tee or substituting a traffic cone for our smaller players. The last segment of our hitting portion will discuss the body's movements and the drills used to work on those movements. We'd like to help eliminate dancing feet that are moving during and after the swing. Any extra foot movement causes the head and eyes to move and adds to the challenge of hitting the ball. We'd also like to eliminate the bending of the front leg, which stands in the way of our goal of maintaining balance throughout the swing. One drill that we can utilize to help quiet the feet and stay balanced is to have the player widen their stance and hit a heavier ball off the tee. The soccer ball shown here provides a resistance that gives immediate feedback to the hitter when they are off balance. Another drill that can have positive effects are one-handed swings. The player chokes up to the top of the grip and places their other hand on their chest. With one hand swings, the player focuses on their hands and generally quiets their feet. Another benefit to the one handed swing is beginning to develop a swing where the hands stay inside the ball, relatively close to the body as the body begins to twist toward the ball, and to establish that their bottom hand palm should be down at contact and their top hand palm should be up at contact. This palm up, palm down position and an extension through the ball is preferred to the commonly heard advice to roll the wrists at contact. Rolling the wrists create a bump in the swing as the bat approaches the ball, making consistent contact even more of a challenge. In situations when our players will be hitting a thrown ball, it is important to monitor the timing of their front foot. If they take a stride, the foot closest to the pitcher should be down stride or step completed with the ball about halfway between the pitcher and the batter. A common issue is a player whose front foot gets down late and then rushes the swing, sacrificing many of the fundamentals we've discussed here. Hitting is certainly an exciting and fun part of the game. Helping players develop the proper swing is a delicate balance between working on those fundamentals and not letting that work stand in the way of the pure joy of hitting the ball and running the bases. As we mentioned earlier, fear of the ball is the primary hurdle in learning to catch. To help that, we use a tennis ball in our catching drills. Emphasize the player showing two hands as a target and then using the throwing hand to follow the ball into the glove. As you improve, you can add distance, change from a tennis ball to a tee ball, and also add movement where the player shuffles to their left and right a step or two to get their body and glove in front of the ball. Our final skill and drill combination is fielding ground balls. We start by rolling balls back and forth to each other to get comfortable with the proper body position. Feet spread apart, bottom down, and both hands out in front, like an alligator. We end our time on ground balls, first rolling ground balls, 
covering first and dropping the ball in a bucket, and then hitting ground balls with a bat. The use of an empty bucket is key. It eliminates the step of throwing the ball back to the coach, frees up a player from having to catch in for the coach, and in general has a great increase in the number of repetitions for your team. Two last things before we go. Equipment recommendations. As you saw in the video, having wiffle balls on hand is useful, as well as having an empty bucket so the players can catch and fill that bucket. One last idea to share with you is the use of a pitch counter. As you go through practice, there are hundreds of little things that your players are doing really well. Give them credit for those things, count them, set a goal for the team, and see how high you can get. On behalf of BBSC, thank you for watching our video. Thanks to our demonstrator. Thanks to our coaches for volunteering your time. Thanks to our parents for supporting our league. And best of luck to our players this spring. See you on the field.